This is MacGyver, a clever secret agent who uses common everyday objects like paper clips and rubber bands in really inventive ways to get out of life and death situations. My favorite example is when he uses a pair of binoculars and mirrors from his Jeep to point and focus sunlight onto an enemy weapon to heat it and destroy it with some clever stuff. Now, what if I told you that we have more in common with MacGyver than you might think? Sure, we're not special agents on top secret missions, but we know how to be resourceful and how to solve problems. Think of the time you used a mug as a paperweight. Oh, and you folded a piece of paper to fix a wobbly table. Or every single time you use duct tape for anything. <laughs> Creativity is not just the purview of artists and writers. It is our natural ability to be inventive and resourceful. It is an ability that's present in all of us. And it is this ability that helped us bring back our Apollo 13 astronauts safely. And it is this ability that has fueled major innovations and scientific leaps throughout human history. And it is this ability that will help us cure disease, help those in need, and allow us to explore the farthest reaches of the universe. Now, some of these challenges are quite difficult and some, frankly, quite dangerous. So who can we ask for help here? <laughs> sure, our machines could help us here, but they face a problem. And that problem comes in a box. Artificial intelligence has come a long way since when Alan Turing first proposed his famous test for machine intelligence nearly 70 years ago. Today's AI systems outperform humans on many tasks that arguably require intelligence and creativity. In 2015, DeepMind's AlphaGo system defeated the reigning human world Go champion. You see, expert performance at this ancient and sophisticated Chinese game was considered unthinkable. DeepMind wasn't done, though. AlphaGo's successor, AlphaZero, learned the game from scratch and defeated AlphaGo in an astonishing 72 hours. These AI systems use state-of-the-art deep neural networks and reinforcement learning techniques to run simultaneously on hundreds of computers and train by playing millions of games. They're adept at finding patterns and applying these patterns to new games. But as astonishing and groundbreaking as these achievements are, they're nowhere close to human-level intelligence. You see, we humans have an intuitive sense of context that allows us to infer causality and fill gaps in our information. We can fool these machines by simply blurring an image. Here's one where it thought a panda was a gibbon. Believe it or not, these two images of the pandas are actually quite different. We can confuse these machines by distracting them. Here's one where a small psychedelic sticker caused the machine to confuse a banana for a toaster. We can confuse these machines by simply changing their viewpoint. We can even confuse these machines by adding just a little graffiti. Here's one where it confused a stop sign for a speed limit sign. In other words, the box, the limits of AI, is still there. AI systems lack common sense. Now, if we need our machines to help us in the future, they're going to need common sense. But they also need the ability to think for themselves and make unassisted split-second decisions. This means being resilient when problems arise, or when things don't go according to plan, or when their common sense assumptions go wrong. They have to start thinking out of the box. But first, we must get them to think about the box. What are some of these common sense assumptions that could go wrong? Around the time of Alan Turing, psychologist Carl Dunker started exploring this intersection between intuition and creativity. And he illustrated this with a neat puzzle. Let's say I gave you the following task. Light and fix this candle to the wall in such a way that the candle wax won't drip onto the table below. You can only use the box of thumbtacks and the matches. What would you do? To solve this problem elegantly, you have to realize that the box is not just a holder for thumbtacks, but when dumped out, can also serve as a candle holder. Most people find this problem quite hard. But why? 
our common sense assumptions can sometimes get in our way. In this puzzle, our strong common sense assumption for the box's typical use blocked our ability to consider other uses. These everyday assumptions have to be broken if we are to be creative. To start thinking out of the box, you have to question the purpose and the integrity of the box itself, its defined limitations, its weaknesses. So can we get machines to do this? AI is fundamentally based on the assumption that human thought can be mechanized. Now in this conception, searching for faulty assumptions can in and of itself be mathematically quite difficult. How would you connect these nine dots with four lines? Most people, when given this problem, assume that they have to stay within the grid. But if you do so, it's not going to help you. It takes five lines. Now, once that constraint is broken, however, it seems like there are infinitely many choices. How far to go past the grid, when to turn, which way to turn. In a recent paper I wrote with Professor Matthias Scheutz, I showed that these sorts of problems are actually computationally impossible. So is there no hope? But wait, you say. We humans do this all the time. We get stuck, sure, but we also get unstuck. How do we do this? I wrote a paper in which I explored how our brains might do this. And what I found was that we employ a series of clever problem-solving strategies. We ask what-if questions. We experiment with the world around us. We indulge our curiosities. We question what we know. And we imagine alternate outcomes. These strategies together form our cognitive playbook of heuristics. Now, can we get machines to, to use this playbook? Here's a machine. It's a pick-and-place robot. It does two things. It can pick and place objects. Now, obviously, to do these two things, it's going to need a set of sub-actions. Grasping, lifting, moving, setting down, letting go. But because it only really does two things, it doesn't need to constantly think about all of its sub-actions, much like you and I don't think about how much to bend our knees when we walk. So these sub-actions are nicely packaged into a single pick-and-place action. Let's give this robot a little task. Move this blue block to location three. Simple enough, right? For this robot, all it has to do is pick and place the block at location three. But now let's challenge this robot with a puzzle. Same task, move this block to location three, but this time, I forbid the robot from touching the block. Much harder, right? Well, actually, for this robot, it might seem like it's impossible with just a pick and place action. But you see, it has what it takes to figure this out. It must do a couple of things, though. It might ask, what if I could solve a simpler problem? And ask, what if I could not touch the block but pick it up? What heuristics would it need to solve this simpler problem? Well, it would have to play around a little bit and realize that sliding the block has the same effect as picking and placing the block. And to discover this, it would have to play around a little bit and realize that the lifting and the setting down sub-actions are unnecessary. So with this slight action, it can now solve the simpler problem. It can pick and place the cup at location three, slide the block to location two, pick and place the cup to location one, and slide the block to location three. But what about our original problem? Move the block without touching it. Well, to solve this one, it would have to discover a few additional things. It would have to realize that the cup, when flipped over, can be used to enclose the block. And once enclosed, the cup can be used to slide the block across. But how does it discover these things? Well, it must continue to do experiments and notice anomalies. It can flip the cup by dropping it on the edge of the block a few times. It can then cover the block by picking and placing the cup on top of it. Realize, though, that it has no concept of covering. So it's going to be somewhat weird and surprising for the robot to realize that the block has suddenly disappeared. But if it plays around some more, it might realize that when covered, the block slides with the cup. 
thereby solving the overall problem. Through a series of such heuristic powered experiments, noticing things, making discoveries, and then using these discoveries, the robot can solve what's an otherwise an impossible problem. Computationalizing this form of thinking requires implementing these heuristics. Yet we have to realize that our own playbook has not been fully explored. Studying when a heuristic applies and which heuristics apply to which types of problems is at the frontier of intelligence research, one that I am actively exploring. With heuristics comes potential creativity. And with potential creativity comes the next iteration of AI. Notice, I did not say anything about computational power, hardware, or pattern recognition. We cannot move AI into the next generation by simply building faster machines. What we need is a fundamental shift in the way we view learning, reasoning, and problem solving. And what this lesson in creative problem solving has taught us is that there isn't just one heuristic or algorithm or technique that's going to be a silver bullet. Our own playbook has not one, but many unexplored plays. The next breakthrough in AI will come not from building faster machines, but from forming a deeper understanding of ourselves and uncovering the human playbook. Thank you.